Welcome, Family Church Online, on this beautiful Memorial Day weekend. We really do appreciate you tuning in today, spending some time with us. I hope some of you are sitting along your poolside this weekend, watching us on your smart devices. I'll be honest, I struggled this week trying to figure out the kind of sermon to put together uh, for you this week. I wanted to go back and replay one of my hits throughout the year and just play that. I was a little distracted this week by the weather outside and a couple projects that I had at home. But I did sit down and I thought about what what should I share this weekend? Um, what do we need to hear going into this Memorial Day weekend? And I started thinking about my kids. When my kids were young, they would try and throw a temper tantrum on me. And they would be crying out of nowhere because they wanted something. And uh, th- they're pouting, they're crying, they're mumbling, trying to articulate what it is that they wanted. And in their crying voice of stammering sil- syllables, in which I do not speak, nor can I understand, I would cut them off and I would say to my kids, use your words. Use your words. So Caitlin, when she was a little kid, she'd be whining and i say, Caitlin, use your words. Michaela, use your words. Liam, use your words. And what I was saying to them was, Stop the temper tantrum, stop the crying, and express to me what it is that you need. Then, and only then, I could do something about it. I can't do anything about your situation when all you're doing is whining or crying or mumbling. So here's today's big idea. Use your word. Use your word. You have two opportunities that lie in front of you right now. You can throw a temper tantrum and focus on all the things that are wrong around you. I see people put up these memes. I thought 2020 was going to be a great year uh, and we haven't done anything. Or, Or let's have a redo for 2020, whatever it is. We're focusing on these things that are wrong. Or you can use your word to connect to God, who is the only one who can correct your situation. He's the only one that can do anything about your situation. Use your word. Lifeway Research did a study in July of 2019, and they found that 32% of Christians say that they read their Bible every day. I think that number's a lot lower. They They definitely did not do that study in the Northeast. We need to use our word. And the stats are showing that the majority of Christians are not actually using their word. So let's look at a result in the Bible of using the word of God, okay? In Joshua 1.8, if you're sitting there at home studying this out, Joshua 1.8, open this up, it says this, This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, but you shall meditate day and night that you may observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then, right, for when you meditate on it, when you feed on the word, when you use this word, right, it says, so that you can do according to what you read. For then you shall make your way prosperous, and then you shall have good success. And I love what this says here. It says, when you use your word, you make your own way prosperous, and you make it so that you'll have good success. The result of using your word is prosperity and success. So if you want to prosper, if you want to have success, then you have to meditate on the word. You have to use the word. I think a lot of us want the prosperity. We want the success, but we don't want to have to do the first part. We don't want to have to meditate on the word or use the word of God. So I'm going to tell you this. If you need success in your life, if you need finances, use your word. Maybe you're in a moment right now where you're lacking faith. You need more faith right now. Romans 10, 17 says this. So then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Faith comes by using the word. Get into the word. Hear yourself saying it, applying it to your life. Use your words to obtain 
godly faith. Now, maybe there's someone out there today that you're struggling with some bad behavior. Or you're doing things that you know is not pleasing to God. How do we correct that? How do I get out of that mode of doing the wrong things? Use your word. David says to us in Psalm 119.11, I have stored up your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. I've got the word in there so that when the desire to do bad things come, the word can overpower that desire. Maybe you're looking for direction right now. You need to make a big decision in your life. Use your word. Psalm 119, 105 says, Your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. This means that the word gives you direction. It shows you the way to go. It makes clear what your next step needs to be. Okay, Pastor Mike, we get it. We get it. We can look things up. We can go find a Bible verse for just about any situation that we're facing. So what? What's the big idea about having a Bible verse? Here's the big idea about having a Bible verse. That when you have a verse, you have more than just a verse. Did that make any sense to you? When you find a scripture that speaks to you, you have more than a scripture that speaks to you. All right, watch. John 1.1. 1, 1. In the beginning was the Word, the Bible. The Word was with God. The Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made, and without him nothing was made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. Jump down to verse 14. Ready? And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only son who came from the father full of grace and truth. So when you have a verse, you have more than a verse. You have a person, you have Jesus. That's why you gotta find a verse. That's why you gotta use your word because when you're using the word, you're using God in flesh in your situation. Using the word is not simply going on a scavenger hunt, looking through a book to find an answer to some idea that you have no idea how to apply. Using your word is a conversation with God Almighty, your creator, who intimately knows you and cares for you immensely. Using your word is connecting with the answer it's not a book, it's a person, and his name is Jesus Christ. Hebrews 4.12 says this to us, for the word of God is alive and active, sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates even to the dividing of soul and spirit and joint and marrow. It judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. You see, this isn't a dead Bible that we read. It's not dead scriptures. It's a living person. It is alive. It is active. We do not search dead books for current answers. We search a living scripture for a living answer that applies to our lives today. This is why we can read a scripture, see something in it, then read that same scripture 10 minutes later and see something totally new. It speaks to us totally different. That's why you could read a passage your entire life and every time you read it, it speaks something new to you because it's alive, it's speaking, it's breathing, it is God. It is alive and active. Use your word. Now listen, do not set out to read your Bible from Genesis to Revelation like it's a storybook. You're going to get stuck in Leviticus and just want to rip your eyelashes off. Or you're going to get into the book of Matthew and when you get into the begots and who is in the genealogy of Jesus, you're going to want to go to the dentist and get a cavity filled because it's going to feel better than trying to read all that. Start by doing a Google search on a topic that you need help with now. So let's just say that finances are an issue for you right now then go on Google or Yahoo or Bing or whatever you use and type in 
what does the Bible say or scriptures on finances? And it will pull up a bunch of results, you know, say top 25 verses on finances and go through those and begin to read them. Let that word speak to you. Use your word. Use those verses. Look up what it's speaking to you. Once you find that verse, ready for this? Recite it out loud. Say that Bible verse out loud. I, there's, there's something powerful about hearing your own voice out loud in your ears speak the word of God. For those of you that, that don't ever talk out loud to God, you don't ever pray out loud or read your Bible out loud or say scriptures out loud, you're missing out on a powerful, powerful encounter with God. There's power in hearing your own voice speaking the truth of the word of God. Use your word. As we close out today on this Memorial Day weekend, sunshine and you're getting antsy to get outside, get by the pool, spend some time having a barbecue with your family, no more than 10 people at a time, right? I pray that this would be one of those things that just stirs in your spirit that I need to use my word. I don't need to use the news. I don't need to use the media. What does the word of God say about my current situation? What does God want me to be hearing? What does God want me to be doing? How can I be a living vessel unto God right now in this time? Amen? Let me pray for you. Father, we thank you for this time that we could jump into your word, that we could hear a short message from you about where we are right now, how you want to speak with us. Help us, Holy Spirit, to continue to navigate these times. Lord, we do pray that very shortly we will be back together worshiping in one house in our church. We can't wait for that moment. So Lord, I thank you this Memorial Day weekend that we can rest, we can relax, that we know that you are there. Be our guest at our barbecues this weekend. I pray, God, that everything we set our hands to would prosper and be successful. In Jesus' name, amen. Love you.